Let's make a slipcase. The slipcase is a common device used to protect books. In this case, this slipcase accompanied a very elegant edition that was printed in 1975. It brings a decorative element and it actually adds a, an element of, of protection as well. Using that as a model, I wanted to make a slipcase since this iPad and my sketchbook are so similar in size, I just wanted to be able to carry it. And I've used a traditional slipcase model to do it. So I'll show you how to make this. It's a little uh, foot. So I'll make sure that I'll, I'll put this caliper on what is the the thickest part that gives me a little I'll, I'll give myself a little bit of room I don't want to make a measurement that's that's too tight I can take that measurement and see that it's about one and nine sixteenths and so that's the thickness that I'll start This slip cover has three sides. You can see I've marked them side one and I've marked them with Jim's notebook slip cover. <coughs> um, as, these, as these will be on the side, I need to measure for the piece that's going to cover it. And <coughs> I need to be sure that the that the dimension of the cover is long enough to cover what's inside it plus the thickness of each board but I'm going to cut it to about 12 and 11 16th just so that it has some um, a little bit of play I, I want to be able to take the devices in and out easily so that's going to be the width of the cover and I'll need one for the front and one for the back I'll need to measure from this this edge to the outer side of the spine piece and it says about nine and a quarter and I'm gonna cut a front and a back board that's nine and a quarter by twelve and eleven sixteenths I will I will assemble this by gluing this to this edge and this to this edge. Tablet has this bumper corner and I could draw a bit of a contour and perhaps trim that down. I've trimmed a very small indentation to go along the tablet case, but since the notebook is square, I'm not going to make this round. So this is one of the two front and back covers. You can see this is the top. I'm going to put adhesive on the edge of this and then just place it down so that this bottom or spine piece goes on the inside of this board, which is the cover on the edge so I do not need a large brush. I will hold this down until I feel the adhesive has begun to dry. And since this is going to touch that side, I put adhesive here.
I'll put the other wall on this side. I've glued this side down, put adhesive on the edge. I've reinforced a little bit on the outside. I've placed these weights to keep it straight. While it dries, I'm going to go wash my brush. I'm going to remove these weights and look for some board to build up so that when I place this, it this inside part doesn't just cave in. Since these two boards are almost the same depth as that side, I'm going to just simply add a bookbinder's board, some binder's board, and now it's practically perfectly level. I'll move this more to the center. I'll dry fit this other cover to make sure that it's all good. And I'll get a I'll get a clean brush and I'll put adhesive along that edge. I have my clean brush that I washed. Just apply The weight that's in the middle will keep the book binding board from deforming. I'm going to let that sit for an hour. Okay, it's been about an hour, so I'm just going to remove bring the piece out from the side. You can see the, the case. This book cloth, which will hold up to wear and even a little bit of moisture, has a fine pebble texture on it. This book cloth will be used to cover the three sides to the two short sides and the long side. It will be folded into here and I have a line so that I can bring up the side. You may want to use a wider piece of book cloth. This is cut with a minimum amount for the turnover, but I'm going to try it. I will put adhesive, some PVA or Sobo on here, and I'll use this line that I've marked, which is, I'll use this center line, and I will line it up with this line. This is the long back side. I have a small container with PVA or Sobo, and I have a clean, clean brush that's about an inch wide. I've put, I've put waste paper in the event that I spill. I've covered the, only this long side. I'll remove the waste paper. My book cloth has a border line and a center line and I'm going to place the center line. I'm applying a little pressure. I'll turn this over. And apply pressure. 
I'm going to use a Teflon fold, Teflon tool here. Do the other side. Well, I just place it and cut that off so I can simply use it to help us set the size there we go I'm applying adhesive on the short side and as I bring this down I'm going to align it across my pencil mark Repeat applying adhesive on the opposite side. And again, I'm going to align the pencil mark. So now three sides are covered. These little cuts that I made, these cuts will help me when it comes time to turn these in. I will replace these boards inside so that as when I'm folding these over and applying pressure I don't deform the inside. I'll place a board so that when I lay this down <coughs> I don't have to, I won't smash these sides. Since I have boards on the inside I can apply pressure without fearing that I'm going to deform it. I use these single edge razor blades at times. If this didn't cut completely. I can use a Teflon folder. The Teflon is it's easy to wipe any adhesive off. Turn this over, and I'll do this side. Once again, the Teflon folder, it's clean. At a very slight angle. Carefully cut that. Put adhesive on the cloth. And so now we'll work on the turn in, the turn in on both sides. I'm placing the edge of this ruler on the in, to align with the inside of this wall. Cut this way, once again to the inside, and when this 
edge folds over, it goes on the inside of this space. I'm now going to cut on the inside of this so that I have a small tab. I've added tape to hold it back while I cut it, but that's only for the camera. You can see the inside wall there. When I cut here, the result will be a tab so I can bring this down, over, and bring this, and then bring that. Okay. I'll do it to all four sides. Okay, so all four sides now have these little tabs. I, I will, if that's not cut low enough, the first phase is going to bring this over. Then I'll bring that over. I'll bring this and then that one. So I'm using some waste paper. You can apply the adhesive to the book cloth or inside. I find it helpful to start applying it on the inside of the board. I'll put some on the I'll put some on the actual edge of the the board. There's no adhesive here. So I'll set this down. And I'll start by pulling these over. I can add adhesive to the book cloth. That's get out of the way. When I do this side, I'll do the other side next. It is a little bit awkward doing this under a camera. So I'll bring this over. I'll throw this away. And that's been folded in. So you can see it. I'll do the, I'll do the, the this side next. So now you have slightly uneven turnovers, but you have this completely covered, and I will measure from here to here with about three quarters of an inch for turn in, and then from side to side it will be accurate. It's frequent that the sides of a slipcase will be of a durable material and then a, a decorative paper might come up here. I left the case under weights overnight. And I'll most likely carry it with the spine of the sketchbook here and the iPad there. I have flexibility on the length of the paper because if I place it here, I run it up and then turn it in. I will often give half an inch to a full inch extra so that I can turn that in. From side to side I need to cut it straight because I just paste it down. So this ruler, I like sometimes to use clear rulers, but this one you have to be careful the zero mark uh, is not the edge of the ruler. This one, the zero mark, is this large, large line. It's not the edge of the ruler. So, If I have a limited amount of paper or it's real expensive, sometimes I'll make a trial cut out of waste paper just to see what it looks like, and I might do that for this one. By cutting a piece of newsprint or a cheap 
waste paper, I can see what the what the dimension is going to look like. I can see how the paper will fit on the side. I don't want the paper to come all the way to the edge as it, it might catch and lift up. Um, but this amount of space is, is really uh, your decision. Uh, if you want to bring it all the way out, uh, that, that would be fine. I traditionally just leave a little bit of a border. And from here, you can see I, I just rounded it up to 10 inches and um, it will give me plenty for the for the turn in. So now now I'll cut the uh, the actual paper. The paper's been cut. I have double checked that the texture that I want goes this way. I have a, enough for a turnover. Even sitting overnight and cutting it down, I have a bit of a curl, but hopefully the adhesive will flatten that out. I'm going to demonstrate a few ways of applying adhesive onto paper or onto the binder's board. This roller is 6 inches or 15 centimeters, and it's, it's longer than I need, but it's the only roller I have right now. I buy these at hardware stores or big box stores. It's a real fine uh, foam and I'll look for a tray and I'll pour out. Um, when you're applying something like this, it's, it's not a good time to, to try to save on the adhesive. You want to cover it and you want the paper to have enough to adhere to. If you recall, I have, a, I have boards inside there. The, the board inside the case also helped me keep it stable and keep it from moving around. I did get out a little far here and I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to try to work very quickly and I'm going to apply I have to be very careful that I don't set my paper back on anywhere that has adhesive. The secret to doing this is to get rid of the secret is to get rid of that waste paper. from the inside, the middle, out. My hands, my hands are clean. I think my hands are clean. Any of your folding tools, any of the folding tools can help you smooth this out. By using my hand I can feel sometimes where there's an uneven and I can apply. Right. Also by putting board inside here when I push down it creates pressure this point I will now I will carefully ooh and I didn't it rip look at that this paper is not and that's possible because I'm folding against the grain I did notice that this paper is extremely stiff and so you've caught me look at that so you learn the challenge of something like this um, by not putting the adhesive on the paper, had I put adhesive on this paper first, 
it might have softened it and we're going to do that when we do this other side so all I can say is oops I sometimes like to pre prefold what I'm going to paste and here's a situation which when I touched the paper I did notice that it was very stiff it should have warned me that I might have been smarter to apply adhesive first and it also this paper may not this paper may not be ideal for this project okay I'll lift this up I'll, I'll cover up the part that has adhesive and and the, the even with the adhesive the paper is not really conforming to the edge it's looking rather puckered so they say don't cook a meal that you've never eaten for guests and look what happens to me when I make this without ever having used this paper uh, will I use it again uh, probably not before I test it out so you can see it's not real crisp and I don't like that so be warned it's not real crisp so be warned I'll see if I can find what the label of the paper is okay this is what it looks like to the viewer when I'm carrying it you and I will know that the inside is not as fine as we could have done but we'll go forward we'll learn from our our trials here and we're going to cover this side on this side I'm going to put the adhesive on the paper and maybe we'll see that it will fold easier I have cut the sheet to the same dimensions for the other side and let's paste this down by putting adhesive on the paper one thing I have learned in using foam rollers the advantage of course is that it applies it quickly and evenly one thing I have noticed is it, it seems that I have to use more adhesive simply because the foam just absorbs I find that I use more adhesive because the foam roller absorbs so much you have to be careful I'm only going in one direction I don't want to bring it back this way if your paper is real stiff you might add a mixture of this PVA product and a mixture with methyl cellulose or even a little bit of water my hope is that this side this is more flexible now that I've put the more now that I put the adhesive on the paper this is covered with adhesive so this goes in the trap this does curl a little bit actually went down a little better than the other side so um, my practice usually uh, has me make a dummy one with the materials it's always challenging to try to make a finished product with materials that you've never used so we're learning here I now have a fresh piece of waste paper, a brush and some adhesive. 
you'll notice this time I did not pre-fold it. Do my best to saturate the paper. And I'm applying the adhesive with a level, you know, with a good amount of just pressure. And I'm actually going over it in hopes that the moisture will enter the fibers of the paper. Slowly, let's turn this over, making sure my fingers are clean. This little ridge up here is giving me a bit of a challenge. And look, so far, the paper is conforming a little better. And it does not feel as stiff. It does not feel as stiff as the other side. It just tore a little bit. Uh, come on. Don't make me look bad. So, had I done a test run, I would have avoided you seeing me struggle with it. And if I felt that this material was absolutely essential for the design of my slipcase, I may have actually applied black book cloth on all four sides and then placed this flat paper in here a, keeping a black border as part of the design. The paper is wonderful paper. It does not like it does not like to be wrapped around. And um, as in all book projects, you want to let this sit for several hours. And I'm going to put some waste paper on top and waste paper on the bottom. I find that helps draw some moisture. I'll let it sit in a few hours and then I'll put, I'll begin using it for my slipcase to carry my iPad and my sketchbook. If you make one, let me know. I'd love to see what you do.